Good morning. My name is Gloria, and I was a Space Shuttle main engine avionics engineer for eight years. Behind me is the Space Shuttle Atlantis, and she was my primary responsibility during that time frame. Atlantis has flown 33 of the 135 flights that comprise the Space Shuttle program. The last flight for her was also the last flight for the Space Shuttle program. That was STS-135, and it landed here at Kennedy Space Center in July of 2011. Now, since the orbiters do their work in space, we need a way to get from the ground into orbit, maneuver while we're in orbit, and then come back home safely. To do that, we rely on a propulsion system. What you see behind me is the propulsion system for these space shuttles. Comprised mainly of three pieces, we have the main engines, the space shuttle main engines. You see the nozzles here, here, and here. These get us from the ground up into space. While we're in space, we use the reaction control system, which are these little jets right here, located in a pod arrangement right here. This is one, there is a second one there, and there is a similar configuration in the nose of the orbiter. These use little jets of gas to maneuver us while we are on orbit. When we need to come home, that's when we rely on these engines here. That is an OMS engine, or orbital maneuvering system. There's one engine there, and there's another engine there. Their sole purpose is to slow us down enough that we can re-enter the atmosphere and come home safely. Now, over here, we have a photo of the Atlantis sitting on the pad. What you see here is the orbiter itself. The main engines, of course, are right here. All of the fuel and oxidizer, the liquid propellants that are needed to power those engines are located in this big orange external tank. That is the only piece of the space shuttle transportation system that we do not reuse. It actually burns up on reentry as it comes back in from outer space. The two boosters on the side look like big candlesticks. They are actually loaded with a solid propellant, a solid rocket fuel. It's a little bit different than the liquid fuels we use for the shuttle main engines. The solid rocket boosters will only burn during the first two minutes of flight. After that time frame, they are jettisoned, dropped away from the orbiter, and they splash down in the Atlantic Ocean. They are recovered, cleaned up, and then reloaded and reused for future flights. The space shuttle main engine will actually run for eight and a half minutes. That takes us from the ground into orbit eight and a half minutes. That's going from zero miles per hour to approximately 17,500 miles per hour. And if we walk over here, we have a real main engine. What you see here is the space shuttle main engines. We use three of these to lift the orbiter from the ground into space. Of course, they are assisted by the solid rocket boosters. This portion here is what we call the power head, and it is normally in the aft compartment and not visible. The engine nozzle is what you see sticking out the back of the orbiter. Now, since this is a liquid engine, we use liquid fuel, in this case, liquid hydrogen, and liquid oxygen as our oxidizer. The two are combined in a controlled manner in our main combustion chamber. All of this is managed and controlled by a main engine controller. Main engine controller is essentially a computer brain, a smart box, if you will, that sits on the main engine and actually controls everything that that engine does. In this case, it is that box right there. The liquid fuel and liquid oxygen are stored in the orange external tank. When we burn them, we bring them into the main engine here. 
We have a fuel side and an oxidizer side. We want to keep the liquid fuel and liquid oxygen is separate as much as possible until we're actually ready to burn them. What we have towards us is the oxygen side or the oxidizer side of the engine. The fuel side is over on the far side. The liquid oxygen would come in here. This is our low pressure oxidizer turbo pump. This pump would raise the pressure of the liquid oxygen from the pressure we receive from the external tank, step it up just a little bit, before it routes it through the plumbing that you see here into this. This is our high pressure oxidizer turbo pump. And it also ups the pressure on that liquid oxygen just a little bit more. Now it is sitting on one side of the main combustion chamber. The fuel side is very, very similar. This is our low pressure fuel turbo pump. This is where the liquid fuel, the liquid hydrogen first comes in and it is routed through plumbing to the far side. There is a pump similar to this on the other side of the main combustion chamber that is our high pressure fuel turbo pump. Both of these combine the liquid fuel and liquid oxygen in the main combustion chamber before they're actually ignited. We have what is essentially a very, very robust spark plug that we call an igniter. It will spark three times. If this engine has not started after that third spark, we shut everything down and we pull this engine, and we find out why it didn't start. It should have. Presuming that it does start, all of the exhaust is going to be coming out of the main combustion chamber down this nozzle. Now, there's a couple of interesting points here. The first one is actually seeing the inside of the main combustion chamber. And that is this area right here. If you'll notice, we have some little pins in there. They look like little pins. Those are the injectors. That is where the liquid oxygen is actually placed in the main combustion chamber. The liquid fuel is essentially just dumped into that chamber. They're mixed and burned. Again, the ratios are controlled by the main engine controller. It is responsible for adjusting the valves that control the flow of the liquid oxygen and the liquid um, hydrogen as they come into the main combustion chamber. Now, another interesting feature is the exhaust coming out of the engine is going to approach 6,000 degrees Fahrenheit. That will melt most things. It will certainly melt this engine nozzle. But we have a way around that. What we do is we take a little bit of the liquid fuel that comes off of the low pressure fuel turbo pump that liquid fuel is going to be about minus 423 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's super cold. We're going to take that fuel and route it through some plumbing here on the side of the engine nozzle. This is what we call our staghorn. And that liquid fuel is going to pool down here in this very, very bottom portion of the engine nozzle. What looks like corrugated metal here, in fact, is hollow tubes. What happens is that liquid fuel is drawn up those tubes while the engine's running. It creates a natural vacuum. That fuel is then dumped into the main combustion chamber and burned with the rest of the fuel and oxidizer that we're going to be burning anyhow. So we don't waste anything, but in the process, it actually lowers the temperature on this nozzle a good 400 degrees or more and that's more than enough to prevent it from being damaged by the extreme heat of the exhaust coming out of the main combustion chamber. I hope you've enjoyed this brief overview of the space shuttle main engines. If you'd like more information on the engines or the space shuttle program please visit nasa.gov's website. My name is Gloria and I wish you in bright futures for all your future endeavors.